Syria's military said Israeli fighter jets fired missiles on the Syrian port of Latakia, damaging containers but without inflicting casualties on December 7. The attacks came after a Syrian politician has claimed that Iran and North Korea are helping the Syrian regime to develop a nuclear reactor. The Israeli military struck a number of sites in western Syria in a rare early evening attack, Syrian state media reported. According to the Syrian military, the strikes hit targets in the area of Homs in western Syria and around Tartus, along the Mediterranean coast. One of the targets was located at the Shayrat airport near Homs. Syrian state media outlet Sana reported that two Syrian soldiers were wounded in the strikes, which also caused material losses. The opposition-linked Syrian Observatory for Human Rights reported that the targets were Iranian-controlled weapons caches. There was no comment from the Israel Defense Forces, in line with its policy of ambiguity regarding its activities in Syria. This was the third attack attributed to Israel in the past week and a half, and at least the sixth in the past month, marking a clear uptick in the number of strikes allegedly carried out by the Israeli military. According to the Syrian military, the last attack was conducted at 7 p.m., an irregular time for an alleged Israeli strike, which are typically conducted in the early hours of the morning. According to Syria, the missiles were fired from Israeli jets flying off the coast of Lebanon, north of Beirut. The Syrian military said it shot down most of the incoming missiles, a claim it makes after nearly every alleged Israeli strike, which Israeli military officials and civilian defense analysts largely dismiss as empty boasts. Additionally, the Israeli forces struck targets using surface-to-surface -surface missiles near the Syrian capital of Damascus. Israeli officials have expressed increasing concern over the proliferation of Iranian-made surface-to-air missile systems in Syria, as well as the Syrian military's improved air defense capabilities, which have made it more difficult for the Israeli forces to operate over Syria. After the attacks, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett said that Tel Aviv is fighting off the forces of evil. He said, we are fighting off the forces of evil in this region, day and night. We will not stop for one second. It happens almost every day. On the other side, Syria's Foreign Minister Faisal Mekdad was in Tehran for an official visit. He has indicated that Damascus will respond to Israel's recent attacks on the country. Mekdad made his comment following Israeli air strikes on the port of Latakia. He said, those who attacked Syria are its enemies and they supported the terrorists. Syria is paying special attention to strengthening trade relations with Iran. Mekdad also warned Israel not to underestimate Syria's military capabilities and its ability to respond to attacks. He also said, Syria is paying attention to strengthening trade relations with Iran which is a hostile country for Israel. We welcome any attempt to end the sanctions and we welcome any participation with Iran in Syria. The Israeli attacks came after Syrian opposition member and former parliamentary member Mohammed Barmo claimed that North Korea and Iran were helping develop a nuclear reactor in Syria, the latest in a series of similar reports in recent years, in an article published in the Saudi Okaz newspaper. Barmo claimed that Syria is working on a reactor project in the Al Ghar plain in northwestern Syria. He additionally joined warnings that Iran is continuing to enhance its nuclear capabilities, stressing the dangers of being lenient with Iran. The Syrian dissident added that if Iran obtains a nuclear weapon, the countries of the region would have the right to possess nuclear weapons within the framework of strategic deterrence and the preservation of Arab national security. Barmo's claim is the latest out of numerous others in previous years which also alleged that Tehran and Pyongyang are attempting to help Damascus develop nuclear capabilities. The report comes as world powers and Iran are holding talks to attempt to return to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action deal after the US pulled out of the deal during the Trump administration. This is not the first time in recent years that Syrian opposition sources and other informants have claimed that the Assad regime continued to work on a nuclear program after Israel bombed its nuclear reactor in the Deir Ezzer region of eastern Syria in 2007. In 2018, a Syrian opposition source quoted by the UK-based Arab language Al Quds Al Arabi news site claimed, Syria was working with Iran and North Korea to build a nuclear reactor near Al Qusair, located near the border with Lebanon about 100 kilometers south of the Al Ghar plain.
According to the 2018 report, the Syrians reportedly transferred uranium rods to the underground facility in Al Qusair shortly after the destruction of the Al Qibar reactor in Deir Ezza, which was built by the North Koreans. In 2015, the German paper Der Spiegel reported that findings from Western intelligence agencies showed that Syria was continuing its atomic weapon program in a secret, underground location where about 8,000 fuel rods were allegedly being stored. The report claimed that nuclear material which had been stored near Damascus was moved to a site near al -Qusir. The Der Spiegel report also claimed that a deep well connects the facility with Zaita Lake, which it said would be unnecessary for a conventional weapons cache, but would be essential for a nuclear facility. Radio traffic reportedly intercepted by spies features the voice of a high-ranking Hezbollah functionary referring to an atomic factory and mentioning al qusair to Ibrahim Othman, the head of the Syrian Atomic Energy Commission. A media source told the Syrian state news agency Sana in 2015 that the claims by Der Spiegel were mere lies, saying the allegations contradict the most basic rules of journalism ethics. The Der Spiegel report was published just months before the nuclear agreement was signed between world powers and Iran in Vienna. In a UN State Department press briefing in January 2015, then-deputy spokesperson for the State Department Marie Half stated that the US was seeking more information, in response to a question referring to the Der Spiegel report. When pressed on what seeking more information meant, Half responded that the US was seeking internally or from partners to see what more they can, if they can corroborate this, but again, not sure they can. A 2018 report by the Institute for Science and International Security stated that while commercial satellite imagery did not provide any concrete information about the purpose of the al qusair site, learning the purpose of this site should be a priority. The report agreed that the site definitely hosts an underground facility. The report also noted that the facility lacked any security fencing, similar to the nuclear reactor in Deir Ezza. A 2013 report by the same institute stated that Syria is believed to be actively hiding assets associated with its past undeclared nuclear reactor effort, including a large stock of natural uranium metal, warning that this poses nuclear proliferation risks. Syrian politician Barmos claim that the Syrian regime is developing a nuclear reactor with the help of North Korea and Iran comes amid the ongoing and revamped talks regarding the salvaging of the Iranian nuclear deal in the Austrian capital, Vienna. If Damascus, Pyongyang and Tehran are, indeed, constructing the reactor and working together on a revived Syrian nuclear program, there could emerge new speculation on what step Israel could potentially take to again attempt to eliminate the chance for Assad's nuclear capabilities, especially in an effort to prevent all three countries possessing such weapons. It is time to get your opinions. Should Syria be prevented from having nuclear power?